Well, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be back out here messing with the pigs. I want to get the pin divided again. Um, I've got a pig that has a pretty good cut on his back leg, this one right here. As you guys can hopefully see it right there, I got some pretty good video of the cut earlier on my phone and I'll throw in here, but I'm not really sure what happened. I'm guessing it got hooked on a fence or a nail or something. I looked around, I really couldn't see anything that was sticking out, but I want to separate him off just so that I can keep a closer eye on him, make sure it doesn't get infected or anything like that. And there's also um, two pigs in here that are a lot smaller um, than the other ones. That one going up towards the feeder and then the other one right over there facing away from us. Those two are probably 50 to 75 pounds smaller than the other four. So either way, I was going to divide my pin off here in about the next week and separate those two out so I could feed them a higher protein feed and try and catch them up to the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now and then just separate the one that has um, the cut off Hopefully I can keep him over there for about a week and I'm hoping he's healed up and then I can put him back over with the other ones and then divide the two um, smaller ones out. I don't think there's going to be a problem with the cut on this pig. Me and mom talked about it and stuff and it really looks like it's just a service level cut um, and the skin's just kind of hanging down. So I'm going to keep a really close eye on it. Um, I don't know how I didn't see it sooner. It looks like to me it's probably been like that for a day, maybe two, and I'm guessing since it was a surface level cut, it just didn't bleed that much. I don't know. I think there would be kind of blood everywhere and stuff, but I want to get him separated off just so that the other pigs aren't messing with him. And so it's easier for me to keep a closer eye on him. So that's what we're going to be doing. I've got to go um, get some fences and stuff so I can divide this pin off and then we'll come back with you guys whenever I'm moving them around. Well, that went about as good as I could have hoped for. A lot better than last time, that's for sure. And if you guys saw, I had um, a couple pumpkins, a couple gourds and stuff in there. I got those from a guy that works at our feed mill. He's been out here a couple times, delivered corn to me and stuff. And he said that he had some people that had some pumpkins and he brought them down to me so I could feed them to my pigs. That's where I got those from. So um, now what I've got to do is get some hay put back up in this part of the shelter for um, the single pig. Then I've got to get um, the water moved and then after that I think that'll be about it really. I just noticed that we've got a cow in the round bell feeder so I guess real quick I'm gonna pick that up and try and get him out of there before I head in as well. Not much hay left in here for them. Um, this is the first bale that we've given them for the year. We just got them off the pasture today. It is the 4th of December. I think we put that bale out mid-November maybe and we were able to leave them out on grass um, for that long. So I think that's the longest we've gone like through the summer feeding them um, late into the winter on the pasture. So we just had a lot of grass that was left out there. Hopefully they'll eat some more of this and then I'll move it down a little bit and put another bale out for them in probably two or three days. They'll need another one. Well, probably actually not that long. It'll probably be tomorrow, maybe the next day.
All right, guys, it's now two days later since I've talked with camera, and yesterday you guys saw me try and put this deer stand together. I almost got it finished, but it just got too dark. Wasn't able to get it um, all done. Um, I ended up having to rearrange some of the bolts and stuff because what ended up happening is these directions, um, all of the bolts are lettered and the nuts and stuff for the different sizes in the directions, but all of the bolts just came in one bag all together, and there's no way to tell which ones are which. So. I had to kind of guess a little bit, ended up getting a couple of the bolts in the wrong spot, had to take it back apart. It's kind of amazing to me that, you know, you can buy something in this day and age and the directions don't make any sense at all. And hopefully I can finish that today. But as you can see, this booger is back in the hay feeder. He's been in here for like an hour, an hour or something. And he ended up eating pretty much the rest of the hay that is in here and so did the other cows. So now this is staying back level. I'm gonna run him out of there real quick. We'll get the tractor fired up and bring another bale of hay in here and get it in for these guys. And yes, that is not from the rain, that is from me. I was filling up the water tubs and got distracted. Left the water running for probably 45 minutes or an hour and flooded all that. It happens. Not much of a cold start. It only got down to about 40 degrees last night and it's been pretty warm today, so oh well. I thought it'd be a little bit better than that. But anyways, I gotta get some of this stuff moved so we can get this bale of hay out of here, obviously. And I just remembered that I've got all the stuff over here in front of these gates. About a week ago, I grinded corn Normally all this stuff is over here, but obviously I've got to get all that moved so I can grind corn. So I'm going to have to get all this stuff moved real quick and get it put back out of the way. Well, I don't know how much of that you guys saw, but they ended up getting out here on the pasture. Most of the time, they're pretty calm whenever uh, you bring the bale in there and they're just kind of standing around waiting for you to get the bale in there so that they can eat on it. But this time, they got a little excited, I guess, and decided to come out here. And once one of them made a break for it, the other one just kind of followed. So I'm just going to run it back in here real quick and get it locked back up. I had to run over and shut the big gate because I left it open there. 
and I just wanted to make sure that they didn't get out out of um, the fence. For the rest of the day, I think I'm going to work on um, the tiller, try and get it running. I got to get the carburetor replaced on it. We've been having some trouble with it. I pulled it out the other day, and I don't know why, but I decided I was going to try and fire it up. And it ran, and I brought it back here to the garden, tilled probably 10 or 15 feet, and then it quit. So um, about a month ago, I ended up letting the pigs back here in this part of the garden. I hot wired this off. I had a fence up across this just in case they got out of the hot wire, but. I had all this hot wired off, had the pigs running um, on all this dirt back here. So as you guys can tell, they kind of dug it out and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but the sides are really mounted up like by the hot wire because that's kind of what they do. They um, just push all the dirt up towards the edges. So what I'm going to do now that, you know, this is kind of lower, I'm going to till this because some of this is kind of compacted. So I want to just till everything up really good, level all this back out and then let it sit over the winter. Um, so I'm going to try and get this carburetor replaced, but I don't think I'm going to show any of that on camera just because you guys aren't going to be able to see. So I will pick the camera up um, here in three or four more days and we'll take another um, look at that pig and I'll get a little bit better video so that we can um, actually see what's going on with him. Well, I think it's fixed. Um, I was able to do that a lot quicker than I thought I was going to. So I'm um, going to run in the house and get a drink real quick and then come back out here and finish doing that. I don't think I'm going to video anymore of it just because, well, I don't really feel like moving the camera around anymore. But anyways, um, like I said, like probably 30 seconds ago to you guys, well, it's been like an hour for me. We'll come back whenever, in a few days whenever. Um, something with that pig has changed. So I'll see you all then. It's now Tuesday, the 19th of December, and it's been about a week, I think, since I last had the camera picked up and we were looking at the pig so he's healed up pretty good i think i'm going to let him back in here with the other ones and separate the smaller two out because i want to get them over there start feeding them a higher protein feed so they start growing quicker here and he's healed up a lot better than i thought he was going to um, to be honest he looks really good actually so i'll get in here and get a video of his cut with my phone real quick to show you guys and then after that um, we're gonna have to take the panel back part so that we can let him back there and then obviously let's try and run the smaller two pigs over there and get them separated out so that's what we're gonna do now and we'll see how that goes Now what I got to do is come here in the barn and I want to mix up some feed, put it where it's a little bit more higher protein. So put some more um, bean meal in it and stuff just to make it higher protein to feed those smaller ones. And that is how I'm going to try and get those two um, to grow a little bit faster. So that's what I'm going to do now. It is now the next day, and yesterday I went and picked up my European mount from the taxidermist. It came back, and I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really good. Today, what I'm going to be doing is getting a gross score on this buck. If you guys did not see the 2023 hunting season video that I put out a couple weeks ago, and you want to watch that, it will be down in the description. You should be able to find it pretty easily. 
And what I'm going to be doing today is getting a gross score on this deer. So for those who don't know, there's a scoring system, um, and it's just kind of a way to see how big your buck is. This one isn't going to be huge. He's probably going to be in the 120s, 130s, something like that. I just want to see what he ends up being. And there's tons of videos out on YouTube talking about how to score deer. I'm not going to go into it, but basically there's a lot of different measurements you take. There's the circumference of um, the antler in a couple different spots, and then you get the length going all the way around the back side of the beam, and then you take the time length, then you take a couple other measurements on both sides, and then you add all that up, and that is what they call the gross score. I'm going to throw you guys on a time lapse real quick, and then we'll come back and look at the final numbers. Alright, well I just finished scoring him and he came out to be 128 on the nose, so didn't quite break the 130 mark. I was really hoping he was going to, but he didn't. Um, him not having any brow signs is what killed him. Obviously, you know, he's got the split over here, but this side is busted off and it really just doesn't have much over here on his right side for brow tine anyway. So that is what really hurt him. If he would have had some pretty decent brow tines on him or something, he would have scored, you know, well into the 130s, but it is what it is. It's alright. It's just part of it. And, um, still really happy with him and I think that is probably going to be it for right now anyways I've got a couple more things I got to do out here but I'm not going to video it in it so I'll be back whenever I'm doing something else As you guys just saw, I twisted this wire together using this vise and drill. And the reason that I did this is because I want to put this wire um, going across the feeder that I have for the two smaller pigs in like an X shape because they are kicking the feed out of the feeder. I need to figure out a way to stop them from doing that. So I'm going to put this in like an X shape going across there. They're putting their front feet in there and stuff and just kicking the feed out. So I think that this will help. And if this doesn't, we'll have to figure something else out. But I'm going to put this across there real quick and hopefully this will fix our problem. Well, I think that that is going to work. It looks like that's going to keep them from being able to kick that out of there. We'll just have to see. Give it a couple days, and they might have either stretched the wire, or they could possibly break the wire or something. I don't know. And I might have to do something different. But looks like it is kind of working, so we'll just have to see. And we'll check on them in a couple more days and take a look at it. Well, it's been probably another week since I've had the camera on. It's been pretty terrible weather this past week. Um, it's been raining nonstop, snowing a little bit. Haven't really had any snow that sticks or anything because it's not cool enough. But um, the pigs, the wire that I put across this feeder for the pigs is definitely working. There's still a little bit of waste. I mean, you're, it's never going to be perfect, but um, it's definitely a lot better than what it has been. There's really no way to keep them out of it, keep them from you know, standing in stuff. It's just what pigs do really so unfortunately i think that that's as good as that's going to get but it has definitely helped a lot and they haven't been going through near as much feed but it's kind of a mess out here feed lot as well like i said we probably got about an inch of rain i'd say inch and a half maybe over the past week it's just been raining every day been overcast and just nothing's dried up but my grandpa said that he saw something on the news that we were our area was 10 inches behind like 10 inches behind in rainfall what we normally get um, and i definitely believe that normally you know we've got um, that ditch running through the bottom of our pasture and normally it has water sitting in it all year round and this summer it was dry um, probably about midsummer it dried up and it has not been 
you know, wet since, and I cannot remember a time that there wasn't water sitting down here around this tree. Um, I was actually able to come down here with the tractor the other day and smooth all that out because it gets pretty muddy. The cows go in and out of it and it just kind of turns into a mess down there, but it's been dry all summer and I was able to smooth that out and stuff and make it where hopefully it won't hold as much water. But um, I've never seen that like that where it's dry like that um, for, you know, several months. It's always at least has a little bit of water sitting down there and it's always muddy, but it was completely dry. But I think that that's going to wrap this video up. Um, I've just been doing things around here. I had to work on our four wheeler and do some other smaller stuff that I can't really video. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Didn't have a whole lot going on, but we did get some stuff accomplished in this video. And another thing I guess I will go ahead and show you guys real quick is the pig that is injured. Um, I think it's that one over there. Yeah. You can't even tell that he was cut really. It's, I cannot believe how well it healed up. It's this one right here that's eating right now. And I got some videos leg the other day and like it's it's unbelievable i can't believe how well it healed back up i mean i have a feeling in probably another couple weeks i probably won't even be able to tell that it ever happened so anyways he healed up and he's just fine so super happy about that that couldn't have worked out any better so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you all in the next one